Hey, this is a short episode of the HVAC School Podcast. It's called a common screw-up, and it's literally a common screw-up, or failure to screw up properly, I guess would be a more correct way of saying that, but... I'll explain more, but before I do, I want to mention our sponsors, which is uh, Carrier, carrier Carrier.com. We are Carrier factory authorized dealers at my company, Kalo Services, so of course we have good experiences with them, and I'm glad to have them as a sponsor. Also, Refrigeration Technologies, RefrigeTech.com. They make Nylog. If you haven't used Nylog on your different threaded refrigeration assemblies, then I would suggest that you do it. It's made of refrigerant oils. It's safe to use on the system. Even if you get a little bit in there, it's not going to cause any damage. That's Nylog from Refrigeration Technologies. You can find it at truetechtools.com if you can't find it anywhere else on the shelves and use the offer code GETSCHOOLED for a great discount. Aeroasis at aeroasis.com forward slash go to find out about their great indoor air quality products, the Nano and the Bipolar for air conditioning contractors. Good products to offer to your customers if they are in need of that sort of thing. And then also NAVAC, navacglobal.com. NAVAC products are all available at truetechtools.com as well. Also, just want to mention the new app is out for HVAC school. So if you want to listen to the podcast, read the tech tips, check out the different calculators that we have to make your job easier, those are all available on iTunes and the Android Google Play Store. Just type in HVAC school. All right, so we're going to talk about a common screw-up, and this idea was sent to me by Eric Melly. Eric Melly has been on the podcast many times, and he now works at Kalos, which we're very thankful for. And he just sent me a photo of some screws, and we're going to get into what those are. But let's start with why it's a common screw-up. So technicians will use an impact driver. That's my first pet peeve. And don't get me wrong, I love impacts. I've used an impact for years. But they take an impact and they use it until the thing starts to clutch and they strip out screws. And this is a huge problem, especially on rooftop units. If you've worked on rooftop units or large air handlers, large equipment, you'll go up to them and they'll have all these different holes that are all stripped out. And it drives me crazy. Inside of a house, it's not as big of a deal. I mean, it is a big deal, but it's less likely that the panels are going to fall off on an air handler. But they do fall off a lot on rooftop units because you have these giant panels they usually don't really have enough screws to begin with, and then guys go and they use these impacts and they strip them out. And so my first thing is don't strip out screws. If you want to do it the old-fashioned way and do it by hand, that's fine. If you want to use a driver, then I suggest not using an impact if you're driving screws. I suggest using a driver, something that's specifically a driver. I use a 12-volt Milwaukee and set the clutch on the thing. So that way, if you do happen to hold down the trigger too long, it's going to clutch and not strip out the threads. When you have an impact that does that same thing that kind of sounds like clutching, that's not clutching, that's impacting, and it's going to mess up the threads on the screws. Impacts are great if you're driving screws into wood, like installing a deck or something. They're great for that. But for putting on panels, you are going to strip out threads using an impact if you're not really, really careful. So I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, I'm not giving up my impact. That's fine. Okay, do whatever you like. But I'm just telling you, be really extra careful because I've seen all of these stripped out screws on rooftop units. Another thing is, this is sort of a side note to this, but in a lot of cases when panels do fall off, the insulation also gets messed up. And so I see a lot of rooftop units, air handlers, where the insulation's peeling off and guys just leave it. That's another pet peeve. Make sure to put that back on very snugly. The best thing to do, put a little spray glue inside of the panel on the inside of the insulation. Let it tack up. Spray glue is a contact adhesive, which means that it needs to tack up before you hold it together. I see a lot of guys spray it on there and immediately try to stick it together. And they're like, it won't stick. Got to let it tack up first. Got to let it dry a little bit. Usually takes 30 seconds or so, and then you can stick it together, maybe a little more, depending on what you've got. And then another great product to use on top of that is butyl tape, silver tape, but it has the really heavy-duty adhesive on the back. That works nice to kind of wrap around the edges just a little bit to hold that insulation in place. Silver tape is okay, but with silver tape, it doesn't stick as well, and so you got to make sure that the surface is really clean. I know a lot of you don't have rubbing alcohol in your tool bucket there, so I suggest butyl tape as a better option. There's a lot of manufacturers who make it. It's not cheap, but it really holds nicely. So make sure to get that insulation back in place. Obviously, if you lost it, then you're going to have to get new stuff and put it in, and that can be a pain, and I get that, but you don't want to leave an uninsulated panel, either on an air handler or on a rooftop unit. It's going to sweat. It's going to cause issues. The next thing is, so you run into a circumstance where you don't have all the screws. So either the screws are missing or when you put the screws back in, they're too loose. And I'm going to raise my hand here because I've been guilty of this at times. The screws weren't in there to begin with when I got there. And so now why is it my problem to put the screws in? But I'm telling you, storms come through and just like we had the hurricanes in Florida, we had hurricanes. Now in North Carolina, South Carolina, we had all these winds 
and you just have panels flying off all over the place, and they hit the roofs, and they damage them. They blow off into parking lots and hit cars. It's bad stuff. It's a really expensive screw-up. So make sure to put your panels back on properly. And this is what Eric sent me. So he sent me a picture of a container of screws, number 12 by three quarter inch screws. So they replaced the stripped out number 10s with number 12s and they still have 516s drive. So if what stripped out was a 516 screw, you can put in this slightly larger number 12 screw, three quarter inches long, 516s drive. Um, this part number is 801722 from Everbuilt. I'm not sure if you find that specifically, but if you go to your Ace Hardware, your Home Depot, or your Lowe's, you'll be able to find these number 12, 516, three quarter inch long screws. Keep those on the truck because now they make a good repair when a screw did get stripped out. And the main thing is you just need to make sure that you have enough screws in the things. Self tappers tend to not be the best because in the process of tapping it in a lot of cases, especially if you're using an impact again, you tend to kind of wallow out that hole a little bit and they don't sit really tight, especially if then you over tighten it. So yeah, I would suggest using something like this. These actually are not self tappers. They're just the sharp points on the end. So you have that sharp point, which I guess you could drill into metal, but it doesn't have that drill point on the end of the screw that then kind of tends to drill a little bit too large, especially with an impact. Again, this comes down to the fact that whose job is it? And this is a challenge in our trade where you show up, you're there to do a maintenance, you're there to do a repair, and you see that this thing hasn't had the proper screws in it for who knows how long. And we can tend to get this attitude of like, geez, that's not my problem. But just trust me, if you're the last one who touched the thing and you don't put the right screws in it, regardless of whether they're there or not, and that panel flies off in a storm and damages the roof, damages a car, hurts somebody, they're going to be calling you. And it's a fairly obvious thing. You're the last one who touched it. So you don't want to be in that position. Whenever you touch a piece of equipment, you're going to have to replace those screws. If you don't have them and it's something you got to build a customer for, then I guess that's what you're going to have to do. Because again, you don't want to leave it. It can be a very, very costly screw up. So there you go. Very simple. Keep some assorted screws. I would even suggest keeping some larger stuff because some of them will have three eighths screws, just getting the next size up on the actual threads. And that way you've got what you need on the truck. I used to keep a whole wide assortment of different screws that I would pull out of old equipment and just have a whole bunch of stuff in my little parts dish there. And it comes in really handy. And again, you got to be a professional. You got to solve these problems, even if it doesn't feel like it's your problem sometimes. So there you have it. Hopefully that helps. And we will talk to you next time on the HVAC School Podcast. Oh,